Right guys, uh, back to it again, New Year. Um, hopefully you all had a good Christmas and a good New Year. Um, been plenty of good uh, racing over Christmas, so uh, there's been plenty of pointers. Uh, so hopefully <clears throat> be able to pick out a couple more good horses at a decent price. Um, and hopefully now moving into the New Year we'll get some, some real pointers uh, towards Cheltenham. Um, so first of all, I've got two more tips for this video. Um, so my first one's coming in the the mare's hurdle. Now, uh, Marie's Rock won at Cheltenham uh, on New Year's Day and was it was pretty good. Uh, I was quite impressed with that horse. Now, I would have liked to back that when before that race. Well, I should have backed it before that race really. At eight to eight to one, but it's now seven to two and it's looking a little bit short given that the market. Uh, there's some some we haven't seen yet, uh, but Marie Rock isn't the choice. My, my choice I'm going to go with is Love Envoy. Um, now I think it's running on Saturday at Sandown. Uh, she is sorry. Um, over a longer trip, over two or three. So I think that's a good a good sign that it's definitely going to be going for the mare's hurdle anyway. Um, and she just keeps winning. I mean, she won at Sandown early in the season on heavy ground. Um, that form's been franked by the horse in second, which uh, won again next time out by by twelve lengths off a mark of one to eight. Playful Saint for Dan Skelton. Um, so the form looks okay. Um, over a trip, she probably isn't a best at. Um, she probably does want that further trip. I think that showed at Cheltenham when she won the novice uh, hurdle. She she stayed on pretty well uh, up to the line, so I can't see the trip being a problem. Um, and I think, re really, she's she, she, Harry Fry has done such a good job with these a lot of his horses. Um, you know, bringing them through lower graded races, and, and keep on winning, and they keep on winning, and they keep progressing. Um, and and I mean, she wasn't an outsider last year for the novice hurdle, but she wasn't you know a strong favourite, not like Dino Blue who was thirteen to eight or something off the back of two runs. Um, Love Envoy had won three or four times that year and, and showed plenty more but was eight to one, nine to one. Um and she's about that price for this, this race this year. She's uh, I think she's twelve oh no sorry, eight to one um f for this race with uh, a few bookmakers now. Um I think she's actually ten to one with William Hill. Now I think they've just gone non runner no bet, so if you did have a, a Hills account I I'd back it on there, given that there's a lot of, a less um, less risk if she, if she don't make it for whatever reason. <clears throat> but yeah, given that she's running at Sandown this weekend, um, again, probably going to be on softest ground, um, but it's going to be over a longer trip, so we'll definitely see how well she stays uh, in a better graded race. Um, and and given that yeah, Honeysuckle heads the market, I'd really like to think she'd be going to the uh, uh, to the champion hurdle. <clears throat> so I'm kind of writing her off for this race. That could be at my own peril, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, obviously, Marie's Rock impressive was it? That was impressive, but uh, again, she she's won. I don't know. I just haven't worn to Marie's Rock, even though she won really well uh, at the weekend, and she won this last year quite well. I just for some reason I can't warm to her and I don't know why. Um, but there's up black brandy love. I haven't seen her this year and I don't know if I've, I've missed something um, from Mullins or or what. But she, she hasn't been run, so I don't know if she's injured or or what. I'm not sure that if if you could tell me, then that that would be good because I've looked everywhere and I can't seem to find why she hasn't been running. Um, Queen's Book lost over the Christmas period. She. I, can't see her winning. I know she came second last year, but she just doesn't look like a horse which will win the mare's hurdle to me. Uh, she's where it well won that race. Um, but again, I think she were in a pretense qualified the race before, so I think she's either progressed a lot or Queen's Book is just not as good as what we think in the market. Is just, you know, jumped the gun a little bit and thought, oh, she's beat Queen's Book. And now she's going to be, you know, she's shorter than she's about eight to one. I think she wears it well. Echoes in rain, 
seems to fall every time. Every time she starts running a good race, she falls. So I wouldn't be confident that she'd even stay up, to be honest. Um, there's one at a bigger price, Tell Me Something Girl, went chasing. Hasn't been seen, seen since, but wasn't the, the best on a chase debut. Now, I don't know if they are keeping a chase over fences or if they're going to send her back over hurdles, but at 25 to 1, she looks a, a big price. So maybe another one for she have a hills account, maybe back in a non runner no bet and, and seeing uh, and, and seeing where she goes. Um, but but yeah, she, I mean, Love Envoy won at Cheltenham last year. So we know uh, she 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 goes well at the track and the longer distance is definitely going to suit. So to so Love Envoy at 8 to 1 or 10 to 1 with hills, if you've got that account. Um, it is the first tip now my second one is for the champion bumper which is not something i normally go for this far out but it it, it ran over christmas and won well and it was facile mode for for tony mullins now that that it won really well i, I was quite impressed actually with how it how it won now every horse in that race bar facile mode i think uh, that's a double check but had had run up won a race at least first time out or second time out before it had gone into that race, so he's beat what seven or eight winners already on his first start, and he didn't have a clear passage. He had to come on the outside and and you know swing around the field and went away really well. You know some of the horses in behind were were um, quite well spoken of and. He swept past him. I mean, Kings of Kingsfield. I, I think we, well, I think I knew already that probably wasn't ever going to be a bumper horse anyway for Giggins Town, but that were well far, that were far behind in the field. And <clears throat> he, he won pretty well. And the, the the champion bumper doesn't look as strong this time, like right now, as it did this time last year. Uh, last year, obviously, the Fasal Vega, American Mike. There isn't that. I don't think this year. We, we've obviously got Chapeau Desai and the one for Gordon Elliott, Better Days Ahead. They don't look the same calibre horses that we, they were in the race last year. They obviously faced each other um, before Christmas and Better Days Ahead won. Now, I don't know if that was Chapeau Desai stayed on quite well towards the end, so I don't know if that was his tr true running or not, but looking through the market we haven't really seen any of the others so it's all you know word of mouth and and, and what's being rumored around so really I, I think the best form on show right now is facile mode's form um obviously queen's gamble has won at cheltenham twice and we haven't seen her since she she won there uh, won the last time uh, but obviously we know she handles cheltenham she she looks a good price at 10 to 1 um but generally the, the bumper winners normally come out of Ireland. They generally have come out of Ireland, normally from one of the big like, big yards. Obviously, it's a, <clears throat> a different yard, but the market doesn't look as strong. I mean, these aren't them superstars like they were last year. Not that we know of yet. I mean, there's only a few months to go now, so they'll have to start coming out soon. Uh, but I think Fasar Mode was impressive, and I... I, I think she's got the. I think it's sorry. He's got the best form on show, and I think it's um, at, at twelve to one looks a, a big price. So yeah. So the second tip I'm gonna go with is facile mode for the champion bumper at twelve to one. Um, so they're the two tips for this week. Uh, I'll just go over a few of the decent performances that I've of horses I've already put up. Uh, Dice Art Dynamo, impressive. Uh, didn't beat a lot, obviously, but he uh, showed that he can jump. He looked a lot more settled. I know he went to the front, and to be honest, he won pretty much in a canter. It wasn't really a race. It'd be nice to see him, be, you know, be taking on and see what he's like with a horse upside. But he, he jumped well. He, he took a lot more respect for his fences, um, which were good to see. Um, and obviously, I put him up at 16s, he's now into sixes, so <clears throat> that's a um, good little uh, tip we've got up there. Uh, Blue Lord, impressive. Uh, Chacon Passoir looked like he needed further. It, it were, you know, it looked like they were going too quick, really, to it for, for him, but that mistake, two out, 
really uh, put him on the back foot and he was never going to win from there. But Blue Lord drew away from that field pretty well. I mean, I know the, the uh, champion chase has now been suggested, so 16 to 1 on uh, Blue Lord might look at, when we put him up into sevens now. Sevens might look, I, I think he'd be even shorter if. I don't, I don't, I don't know because I think if he'd have come out and won by a couple of lengths, you know, staying on, stayed better. I think the Ryanair had definitely been his target because he won so impressively, you know, drawing away from a a, de a decent field, you know, Shaq on Poisson in his in his backyard really, <clears throat> um, and he won so well that now the champion chase is in the picture, which is a bit um, a bit disappointing, but hopefully. They do stick to the, the guns and go for the, the longer trip. Hopefully, well, not hopefully, Aloha's out. But if Aloha is out, you know, they'll, they'll want a horse for this race. And Blue Lord looks like the one for it. Um, the Plutard, uh, non-runner, unfortunately. And the, uh, the Savills, so that were a bit of fucked because it looked a weak race, conflated. Um, he's not he's not going to win the Gold Cup. I just can't see conflated winning it. And it... Some of the horses in behind, I mean, Kenboy finished second, and if Kenboy still finished in second in a race like that, a Plutard on his best form would have absolutely wiped the floor with that field. So, unfortunately, he's still at 8-1. Eight, eight, eight to one. Um, And then, there's a foreign porter. I don't know what to think. I think it was... It was an OK... It was a better run than his reappearance um, home, by, home by the league. Obviously, been undermined a few times now, and he's come out and won twice. He's now head of the market for the stairs. Um, do I think he's gonna win the stairs the way he's run his last two races? Probably not. He's, he's, he's you know, he's, he's off the bridle a long way out. And I know Paisley Park is a similar horse that, that, that they just stay all day, but they come off the bridle early um, <clears throat> and stay up the hill. Now, he came sixth last year home by the Lee, but. I don't know. Six. I think Florian Porter being pushed out to eight to ones have been. I think that's quite generous from the bookies, really, because we know he, he goes well at Cheltenham. Probably wants the. Um, I, I don't know. Did they run on soft ground last year? I think. I, I think it was soft ground at Christmas. But <laughs> I, I still think Florian Porter is the one to beat. I can't see. I can't see home by the lead being off the br bridle coming down the hill. You know, three out, and then trying to stay up the hill. I don't know if he can do it the same way he's been doing it in his last two races on flatter tracks. Will he? It, it, it's, it's up in the air. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed from Florian Porter, but I think still think eight to one's a massive price. So if you were uh, wanted to jump on that now, I'd be better than the nine to two I've got. Um, and then Gridge Claire West, that hasn't run, but he's running on Sunday in the Laws of Nace. Um, I think he's entering, I think I've seen, uh, what's the horse that ran in the Royal Bond? Uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Champ Kiley. Champ Kiley's entered and Gaelic Warrior have all, all been entered with Gridge Claire West. Now, I'd like to think... Paul Tarnend will choose Grange Clare West. Now, I think that'll be... When they, uh, when they get jocked up, it'll be obviously interesting to see, and I think the market will swing in the favour of the one that, that Paul's on, but I think I think he's got the best form, Paul. Uh, Grange Clare West. Um, Gaelic Warrior beat a set of trees, really, uh, in, his, in his reappearance this season. To win by 86 lengths is obviously... Obviously didn't face anything of, of real calibre um so yeah so that's running on sunday so hopefully if he if he can win impressively um i'll have to win impressively because hermes allen was was really good in the cello over christmas that's uh three to one now so i can't see i can't see him short any much more than three to one because i think hermes allen's got the best form on, on show and he's got course uh sorry he's got yeah course form um so, so we'll have to see, but so yeah, so yeah, we had a few that have shortened. Obviously, Flying Potter's uh, Flying Potter has been pushed out a little bit, but so so yeah, so hopefully we'll see a couple more from now on the festival, and they'll, they'll shorten up, and as prices will look 
it will be bigger than what we get on the day so <clears throat> so yes that's everything uh, for this video um so yeah hopefully you enjoy and i'll uh, see you next week